What's up, guys? Mike Nelson, ARG here. We're sitting down with Tej, Tech Tech. Tej, one of our world's worst items, obviously. So, nice to have you here. Hey, man. All right, so you're playing Necros today. Yeah. So, first of all, why was this your choice as your deck? Uh, I'm a big fan of just playing the best deck and like gearing it towards beating all those anti-meta decks and also beating the mirror. Because I think if you, like, Necros is one of those decks where a lot of times the person who can manage their resources better wins. And I kind of like that idea. It's similar to Shadals and Dragon Rulers. So uh, I just went with that deck because I know how to do that and I think I can win a lot of my mirrors. And then I have my side deck ready to beat all those anti Necros decks. It just seemed like the best choice. So one of the things I noticed, first of all, you're main two shared ride. So yeah. you really are expecting the Necros matchup here. I think the odds are that I will probably play more Necros than any other deck. Um, I think Necros and Cleef War are probably the two most common ones and then after that, it's probably uh, a tie between like Satellas, Burning Abyss, you know, Senju, like all those other decks that can just fit into the anti Necroz category. So, um, yeah, I really wanted to make sure I beat the mirror because that's definitely something I'm going to play. And then I can just side for anything else that I haven't run across. Cool. So, one of the things I know is also here Book Eclipse, you're running one of those. It's been a big player ever since Necroz has come out. You have right. Lock. Uh, just stopping your opponents because he's playing with a burning thing. Burning Abyss, you know, what, what was the decision to play one as opposed to playing two or three of these? Uh, it's, it's actually one of my least favorite cards in the deck. So I didn't want to play a bunch of them, but I knew it was the best card for the Jin Lock. And so I'm playing three answers in my main deck that can answer to the Jin Lock. And uh, I didn't want to play more than that because that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to draw it. And uh, you know, I have the three in there. If my opponent Jin locks me and I don't have it, that's too bad for me. But there isn't really a way to get around that. Even if I played four or five or six answers, I wouldn't necessarily have them. Cool. We also got cards like Regeki in here, Bunker Moon. Yeah. Uh, another thing. So for people that don't know, you know, there's three types of mirrors. Uh, what is, you know, what's the mentality of why everyone plays two mirrors each? For those that might not know. Uh, it's just the consistency thing. I mean, you're really trying to run a cycle between each one of them. So like, you kind of go from Kaleido to either uh, Exo Mirror or uh, or cycle, and then to the other one after that, and you kind of loop back around. Um, and so by then, like you know, if you loop through six plus your preparation of rights gets it back from the grave, that's really enough ritual spells. You don't need more than that, and you don't want less than that because you do use two of them a lot. The only other thing I noticed here, we have three MSTs. Uh, obviously, you know, Quill Hearts, Pendulum, stuff like that. Right. But one Trap Stun, though. So Trap Stun actually. When I was building my deck now, I actually looked back at my Fall Dragon Ruler list from uh, ARG Wooster. I think uh, Necroz is at the same point in its lifespan as Dragons was in that at that time, where now it's kind of established as the best deck, and uh, people are sort of gearing up to either just hate on it with like an anti-meta deck or beat a mirror match. So they're either playing Necroz or playing anti-Necroz, which is similar to Dragons because people are playing Dragons or Evil Swarm, and there were like a couple other anti-Dragon decks. So Trap Sun beats all of the anti-Necroz decks, and it's just a one-card answer to all of their back row. You get one turn where you get to do whatever you want, which is usually enough to just win the game. All right, cool. So there's obviously a lot of metagaming going on here. Right. Uh, another form of that, we have two Fire Hand and two Ice Hand on the sideboard. So for those of the people who don't know, what's the little metagame you play with those? So Fire and Ice Hand, I mean, if you draw one, you can answer four cards on the field, you know. If you draw an Ice Hand, you can get to a Fire Hand to kill a Spell Canceler, or vice versa to kind of kill a, you know, a Skill Drain, or maybe a Mistake, something like that. So just having the ability to draw one card and answer and have it answer multiple threats, that's like one of the most powerful side deck cards you can have. And uh, we also have two Mind Crush. How good of a card is Mind Crush right now? Mind Crush is absolutely nuts. I think if you're not playing Necros, you should just be main decking Mind Crush. And uh, the reason I didn't main deck it is because I'm already main decking a lot of traps. And uh, I'm actually going to be siding it for the mirror. So I already have a lot of stuff in my main deck for the mirror match. I didn't want to put more in and then end up facing something that wasn't a mirror and having a bunch of dead cards. So uh, Mind Crush is absolutely nuts. It can just destroy Necros. Because uh, if you hit like a Brio or when they activate a Ritual Spell and you call Shuret or uh, Unicor, you can just decimate their hand and they can't follow up at that point because every play needs to go through in order for you to have a setup for your next play. And so calling, like using Mind Crush lets you cut off that play and then they just don't have a follow up at that point. Right, cool, so moving on from the deck list and stuff like that. Yeah. A lot of things coming up. First of all, we got Premium Gold. Is there anything you're excited for out of that? 
Um, I've only looked a little bit into it. I saw there's a Crush Card reprint, so it'd be kind of cool to see Crush Card come back. I mean, that's one of the coolest cards, right? And uh, I don't know, I haven't looked uh, too much more into it other than that. I have most of the stuff that's in there. I saw there's like Parallel Twister or something. That card seems pretty strong. You can like activate a ritual spell and then chain Parallel Twister and send your ritual spell to the grave to destroy a card. Sort of like Double Cyclone, but maybe a little bit better in a sense. That's maybe one card that I'm excited about. Okay, cool. We also have the ban list coming up, obviously. Uh, you know, what are your predictions coming with that? Do you have, if you have any at all. Um, you know, I think anything could really happen. I don't think Cleaford's seen a. L I've, it's seen some success on the YCS circuit, but I think it's been more recent. And a lot of the time, the ban list addresses things that happened earlier in the format. So most likely, Burning Abyss will be hit in some way. I don't think hitting Tour Guide is really the right way to deal with it because. At this point, Tour Guide's becoming closer and closer to obsolete. I mean, you still have to play it, but it's uh, it's not the right card to hit. I would probably hit Graf or Seer. They're the two best guys. Not really necessary to hit Dante. Probably Graf or Seer is what I would and expect. If there's one thing you could take off the ban list right now, put it the one or two, what would it be? Ooh, man. Off the ban list. Like, you want, like this is a card I want to jam in my deck for Nationals. You know, I think I like that the OCG has Harpy's Feather Duster. I think that card really can define a metagame and it sort of I think balances it because right now you can just if you draw a hand of five traps you just set all five without thinking about it I don't like that I like the idea that you kind of have to preserve your resources with like part like Harpy's Feather Dust or Heavy Storm in the metagame so I'd, I'd like to see that come back so that people don't just play a deck with 10 monsters and 30 traps and just hope to get there. And I would like to play Starlight Road. So that's all we got for you for this yeah, episode of Deck Tech. Uh, Tash, thanks for coming out here again. Hey, man, thanks for having uh, me. Anything you want to say before you go? Any shout outs uh, or anything? Shout out to Team War Council. Uh, we got, I think, six of us playing my, my deck list that I came up with. Uh, me and Nick Ma actually made it together, so hopefully one of us does well or multiple of us do well. All right, make sure to stay tuned to ARG for more live coverage from ARG Hartford, Connecticut. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe. And remember, guys, to play hard or go home. <laughs>